seems legit. G'day Legitimates, welcome back to my channel. Today I am releasing a new bag that I collaborated with Mew Designs on. So we have made the movie night bag. Uh, so this is the more traditional popcorn colored um, bag and then this one I am calling goth corn because it just you know screams gothic and these kind of look like skull popcorns um, so you get both styles of the HTV iron on so these are the the goth corn ones and then the traditional ones are obviously straight and fabulous it has a drawstring top and I have made a chain handle but you can also just make a normal handle uh, but they're pretty quick as you can see by the length of this video so let's go right I have my hardware which are basically just a bunch of grommets in different sizes and I have already ironed on all of my fabulous how amazing is that I'm so obsessed anyway I did not put the extra interfacing on the back because this vinyl is quite thick and I don't want it to be so thick that I can't turn it through and stuff. So let's just start. So I'm going to start with my exterior, which is these fabulous pieces. Uh, all of this was cut on the cr uh, Cricut machine. So we're just going to put these right sides together, grab some clips. I'm just going to use three. Three feels good. And then we're going to maintain the seam allowance. So it should come in right next to the lumps along the top. And then we're going to angle it down. And then when we get to the bottom, it angles out and goes straight like that. Make sure I've got some tails. Trim off those top tails. And this is what we have fabulousness so I'm gonna grab another one and we're gonna basically create a loop of these so I'm gonna pin the top and the bottom together and then I just put one in the middle now you can put extra clips if you want to it's not gonna to hurt to do that quite happy it just occurred to me I've grabbed all the same color that's a bit fun trim the tails off we want to get rid of them so that they're not in the way. So again, top clip. Why does that one look different size? Bottom clip, start up the top here, stitch on an angle, down we go. Straighten out and back stitch. And then we're going to take this one and this, oh my god. Sorry, I'm just really obsessed with the fact that it's all sparkly. And then another clip. And we're going to stitch. So we're going to start at the top here. Now if you're using a thinner vinyl, 100% please put your interfacing. But like I said, this vinyl is quite thick. And the holographic HTV actually gave us extra stability as well. So again, if you're using non-holographic, it won't be as thick. Ah, oh, amazing. So now we're going to take our zigzag scissors or pinking shears, whatever you prefer to call them. And I'm going to cut off most of the seam allowance. This bag probably didn't need to have the half inch seam allowance, uh, but I'm trying to be consistent across all my patterns. And I am not going through all my patterns to change seam allowances now. I feel like this is the hill I'm dying on. Same seam allowance across everything. Do, 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 do. Chop, chop, chop. Throw out the excess. Of course, if you want to, you can cut down manually before you start the seam allowance. That's also fine. I'm going to take our base. Um, and then we're just going to pick a side, any side. I'm going to put the whole base inside and then line up the flat part. Now it should fit pretty much perfectly in there. And again with the three clips, so you wanna have it, so the sticky outy bit should go from seam to seam. And if it doesn't, it just means you've either cut something wrong or 
Um, your seam allowance is wrong. It could go either way, but it's okay. Just fit it in as best you can. So I'm just going to stitch this one side. Now I like to stitch this side and then the opposite one. And this should stop at the seam allowance on the outside. So we're going to do the opposite side over here. Line it up. Three clips is helpful because sometimes things like to move like that. And again, interfacing if you're using a softer vinyl. Backstitch at the start and the end. Backstitching is important. Then we're just going to take this side here and it should line up in the gap. So clip. Clip, clip. We love three clips. And you can grab a second lot of clips and do the opposite side as well if you wish. One, two, and three. So like that. And then we can just stitch one side and then the other. So I'm just going to squish the whole bag down so that I can get to where I want to. Don't be afraid to squish your bag. It's meant to be manhandled at least a little bit. If your bag can't be manhandled, I would not trust it with my phone. Because it's more likely to drop and break it. In saying that, I've actually never dropped and broken a phone. I've broken plenty of screen protectors. Which I suppose is what they're there for. Alright, trim off those tails. And then I also want to trim down some of this seam allowance. The reason for that is it's just going to sit nicer. You don't have to use zigzag scissors because these are all straight lines. You can just use some normal scissors if you want. But A, I really like using these scissors. And B, it just, I don't know, gives more flexibility. Makes me happy. Chop all that and pop it in the bin. And that is our outside done. So I'm just going to now take the bottom and turn it through. You want to be a bit gentle so you don't damage your HTV that you've put on, which is heat transfer vinyl for anyone that doesn't know what HTV is, if you're new here. Oh my god, it looks amazing. Oh, yes! So we're just going to push the bottom out so it sits nicely. It's looking a bit wonky at the moment. So you can just roll that in your fingers until it kind of comes out. And then when we get it on the edge, we're going to Tory squish it to give it like a straight edge. We're going to do the same on the sides here because we want them to sit where we tell them to, not be round. So we want it to be more square and less round. So we want to push it out and squish it. You can even squish it out and add clips to give it time to adjust to the fact that that's where you want it. So if you don't want to spend all the time Tory squishing it, I'm going to chuck a bunch of clips on. I've already done this one, but this will help it be square. It's the same as when I make a wallet and then I put it in a cold heat press to squish it so that all the creases are where they need to be. Sometimes I don't want to spend an hour Tory squishing things. I just want it to sit where it's told and be done. Roll it, squish it, like that. So I'm now going to sit, I know it looks weird, but it's just going to help with the creases. We can set that aside. All right, let's do our top cinch section. So I've got eight of these rectangles. Four I interfaced and four I didn't. The pattern does say to interface all eight, but again, you want to think about what kinds of fabric you're using. This is a quilting cotton, which is thicker than a poplin. So the poplin, I interface all of them, but being a quilting cotton, I decided not to interface all of them. So now we are going to put them right sides together and stitch. And I'm going to chain stitch the two piles. So we're going to take two that are interfaced and then two that are not right sides together 
preferably straight so we don't have some wonky stuff going on and then stitch and then we can cut off the first one open it up so interface with interfaced and again if you've got all eight uh, that are the same you just grab whatever from the pile And then we open this one up and we grab one of these. So we're just going to move through them all. This is the quickest way. Now, if you're new to sewing and this is a bit too much for your brain, do all of one pile and then all of the other. I just really like chain stitching. I find it quick and an effective way to make things. But you can do all of one pile and then all of another. Especially if you're lucky enough to have like an automated cut-off machine where it cuts the tails for you. I do not. So that's why we're doing it this way. Stitch, back stitch. And then we're going to close this up. I like to call it a circuit. I don't know why. Closed circuit is a very common term. So I'm closing the circuit. I'm going to grab them both so we can take them both out now. More zigzag scissors. Trim it down. Next one. I always like to lay my scissors on the bench. I find it a much easier way of cutting, personally. Next one. And the last one. And then we grab the interface one. So the interface one is the outside because that's where you're going to put either your buttonhole or your rivet, depending on what you're doing. Uh, not rivet, eyelet. Or grommet. The eyelet's up to a certain point. I don't know what the size is, but it goes from eyelet to grommet at a certain size. I am using 6mm eyelets, uh, which you can get from everywhere. I know Spotlight has like little packets of them. I got mine from online with a press. You can do it either way. So we're just going to pick one of these and turn it right sides out. And then we're going to slip them inside together like this. And we're going to line up the seams. I'm also going to push one seam one way and the other one the other way. This just ensures a flatter seam, which looks nice. And you don't have to do that. There's not much of a seam left since I cut off all the excess, but just a thought. Like so, and then we're going to stitch all the way around. Now, this seam allowance is a little bit more flexible. You can do whatever you like here. This, the pattern says half inch, but you could do less. You could do three eighths. I probably wouldn't necessarily just do a quarter, but I suppose you could. You just want to keep maneuvering it around and then back stitch. And then more zigzag scissors to cut off that excess. Now, the reason you really do want to cut off this particular excess is because this is going to be with a channel where you put your ribbon or cord or whatever it is you're using. Um, and you don't want this fabric to be in the way and constrict it unnecessarily. Trim it off, like so. So now we're going to open it out like this. I want to, you could also, just as a side thought, if you wanted to, you could cut long strips if you've got non-directional fabric for future problems. But I am going to take the center of one of the pieces. So this will be my front piece. So I'm essentially just going to fold it in half like this, 
find the center, grab a rivet, and just kind of mark where it's going to sit. It's about there. And then I'm going to grab a hole punch with both the layers, lay it over, and punch the holes. That is now done. Both the sides, each side perfectly of the center. Take my little eyelet, pop it through. Take your gasket for the back. Now these have a dent in them. You want them to be a mountain. So it's convex, not concave. The way I remember that is cave is because it goes in like a cave. So we want it to be a mountain on top. Oops. Lay it down in place. And then squish it down. Same with the other side. Under we go. Squish. And so now we have our two magical eyelets. Now one thing I did find out last time I made this bag was that it can be quite tricky to feed this through. I'm going to take enough ribbon, so I'm going to use ribbon not cord, and I'm just going to have it, and you can kind of, there's an official measurement and then there's like an eyeballing measurement, I'm going to take that much, and because this is quite a wide ribbon, I have decided this is an optional extra that's not in the pattern. I'm going to fold it over and stitch a red line of stitching. Both because it's pretty and then also because it's going to make this much skinnier. So I'm just going to fold it over in sections. I'm not in a hurry. I want to make sure it's folded over nicely. And I'm hoping that this gives a nice detail. But, or you could get a thinner ribbon or cord or whatever it is that you want to use. You could use an elastic cord as well if you wanted to. I think that looks pretty and it's matching the bag really well. Yellow, red, and white seems to be my theme today. And then back stitch at the other end. So that's just given like a nice little detail on the ribbon. So now we want to fold them so that the wrong sides are together. So it's like the way it will be in the final. And so I don't have to thread the elastic through, which last time I had to do with a bobbin. That was fun. I'm going to poke this out here and then I'm just going to feed the whole thing through the two layers and poke it out of the other side. Now this is not in the pattern. Normally you just top stitch it and then we feed this through. But I also find that a lot of people find threading stuff through quite tricky. So what we wanna do, with the cording in between, we're going to line up the seams at the bottom and clip them in place so that they can't move later. This will just help with lining everything up. Now, because I folded the ribbon in half, I'm going to be able to feel it in between the layers. So now all I want to do, or at least I hope I can, I can, it's all the way up here. It's not where we need it at all. So I'm going to kind of pull it so the excess is out and that should bring it closer up to here. Now this looks fiddly. Again, you don't have to do it this way. I just don't want to have to feed it through later. So to avoid such things, I am feeding it through now essentially. So we're just going to start up the top here. I might even turn it right sides out so that I can stitch from the top. And then I want to stitch so I'm not going to get the metal uh, eyelets. So again, if this isn't working for you, you can take it off. 
just to get my hand in there really. I thought that would help, maybe it won't. So I've now got my hand kind of here. I'm pushing that up and then I'm going to stitch that area. So I am stitching three quarters of an inch from that top edge, which is enough room so I can get around my eyelets without stitching them. So again, I'm pushing it up and then just top stitching it down. Bring it around, pushing it up. All the way up, like so, and top stitching at three quarters of an inch, which means I don't have to mark a line because there's already a line on my needle plate, which is making it also quite easy. Then we're going to get back to where the hardware is and you just want to go slowly and back stitch. Trim off the tails and that should now cinch around. So we can set that aside and we need to now grab our next bits. Okay, so now we are going to take our lining pieces and put them right sides together. So the lining bottom, I should say. And we're going to stitch and back stitch. And then down the edge and down. Trim the tails as always. Then open this out and grab the next one. Line it up. Now because it's lining, I'm quite happy to do this just by hand. You can, of course, use clips. Um, actions have taught me I no longer need clips for lining. Exteriors, on the other hand, are still a little bit tricky. Backstitch at the end, trim off the tails, and then let's do the fourth one. And done. So that's the bottom. We can also add in our base the same way we did for the exterior. So I'm going to tuck the whole thing in, line it up seam to seam, stitch, back stitch, stitch, back stitch. Turn the tails, pull it and do the opposite side. This is very much like the outside so far. Stitch, back stitch, stitch, back stitch. Trim all the tails. Then we're going to grab this other side. That's why we cut those corners out. It just makes it that little bit easier. Trim the tails. I'm also going to cut off the seam allowance. I'm going to do it all at once. So we just want to go from seam to seam, like so. You don't have to have zigzag scissors for this. You can use straight ones. These are apparently sharp enough, so that's exciting. And the reason we cut off the seam allowance is so when I slot this inside the other part, it's going to sit really nicely. One and two. This just, it is a necessary thing to do. So that is the bottom part done. Now we're going to join all of these top parts together, line it up, stitch, back stitch, down we go, back stitch. You can even grab these two and we can chain stitch at least half of it, back stitch, trim the tails, probably take this one out too, and then open it up. Line it up 
And again, if you want to, you can 100% use. Oh, did I just run out of bobbin? Oh, I did. All right, so we've got a fresh bobbin. I'm just going to re-stitch this whole section. Stitch, back stitch. Slowly do the back stitching because it's a new bobbin and my new bobbins don't like back stitching ever. Line it up. Stitch, back stitch, down. Back stitch. And again, we're going to cut off most of the seam allowance. Like that. Put it all in the bin. And then it's just up to the construction. So we're going to sit the base the way it's going to be. And so then the idea is that this is going to go in between like this and then that shows up on the inside. So what we need to do is put right sides together. So I'm going to turn it this inside out so that the um, rivets are on the inside and then we're going to slot it in like this. And I'm going to take those side seams and line them up. Everything should line up. So you can, that it's not really directional, so you can just pick any side as the front. Like that. And then side three. And side four. So now when you pull this up, and you should check this, but when you pull it up, you should see these on the outside because that's how it's actually going to hop into the bag, like that. And then this will be this way. So we just pop it upside down and add that to the seam. Again, lining up all the edges. No, wait, hold on, did that wrong. I always get this bit confused. That way. So it needs to sit in like that, so it sits like that. So we're just going to flip it inside out and tuck it in. Every time. I don't know why my brain doesn't get that yet. You'd think I'd know by now. And then we're going to add maybe just some extra clips to these sides to make sure everything stays lined up. And so then once it's stitched, the good side will be on the inside, then that other bit pulls out. So you want this one right sides out, and then we're just lining up seam allowances, uh, like corners. Oh, that's still seam allowances. Tuck it in. Now it might not look like it fits. It does. You just go play with it a little bit. It all fits eventually. So you just want to line up all the seams. It just doesn't like to be tucked in the way it is, but it will cope just fine, I promise. All right, last side. Line up all the edges. Add some clips. There we go. So now I'm going to stitch it from the inside. Under we go. We're going to stitch and back stitch, and this is going to be a complete loop. And we're just going to work slowly because it is a relatively small loop. Flip it round. And around. get back to the start we're going to backstitch and trim the toes so that you don't really have to turn it inside out you just pull this bit up like that and that is now the lining of the bag so I can take off all these clips now they should have created some see how the edges just look 
tighter, I guess is the word. See that? See how it's now got a straighter pattern? That was nothing but some clips. So we're going to slot this in. And then I'm going to be using glue. So you, you basically want to stick this in here and all of the loops. Now you can top stitch them. The original pattern had it where we top stitch around. But all my testers did agree that that was tricky. So we're going to get some glue to put in here and then clip it all together. So I am using the Sally's Quick Grip Glue. It does say that it is fine for canvas and leather. Uh, rubber, etc, etc. And cork, actually, that's relevant to this. So it's also quick bonding, whereas a normal fabric glue will take a long time. This one should be pretty quick. It is also clear, so I'm just going to kind of smush it around these loops. Now you don't want it to overflow. And then I'm just going to bring this down line it up and add a clip and we're going to have one clip on every little bubble like so and they should all line up beautifully and it says it only takes 30 minutes or less to dry to have like a good hold so we only really need to leave the glue to dry for about half an hour I won't be sewing through it while the glue's wet, that's silly. Next one, bring it down, line it up, clip it on. And this is why Wonder Clips are amazing. It is not the best of smells, I'm not one to huff glue. I mean, but it's also not the worst. So we just need to bring these down. You don't necessarily have to do them left to right. Currently I'm not. I'm just doing whichever ones make me happy. All right, that one's got some glue on it. So we'll stick that one down. And then you don't want to do all of them at once. That is going to create too much glue and you're more likely to have drama and get it on the outside and then wreck your beautiful bag. So I'm, I'm essentially mainly just doing one side at a time. Doesn't matter if the clips face inwards or outwards, we won't be sewing with them on. So you don't really have to think about that like we normally do. Clip. and the last side so again now we will if you wanted to put more glue you could literally just glue these together and be done I'm also going to do a line of stitching just for safe measure but you could put glue on the entire top part uh, and then just leave it at that and the bag is glued together It would be enough. If you put enough glue, you could just glue this bag and be done. But since this is a sewing channel, I will be sewing it. Add some extra glue in there. There we go. So we are just going to leave that dry. If you pull this part out, you will see that it will sit up higher. And the idea is, is we cinch it like so. So we're just going to leave that to dry and I will be back for you in a second, but for me in about half an hour. Alright, so now that I've given it enough time for the glue to dry, I'm going to push all that lining in out of the way and I'm going to stitch it this way up. Now we can just move all the clips. You can move them as you go or, you know, all at a time. I like the feeling of doing it as I go. So I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the loops. I should definitely just remove them all. So I'm stitching an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the loop 
And this again is just holding everything, giving it a little bit of extra support. Take all the clips off. Don't need them. It's my paranoia that thinks that I do. Alright, and then as we get back to the start, which is here, I'm going to stitch one back stitch and pull it out. And then trim off all of the tails. Now while this does give a line of stitching across there, it is much neater than doing all the loops. I know, I think it looks amazing. So we are now also going to need to change over the die sets, which I just so happen to have with me. Uh, so I am using 10 mil grommets because I think they look nice. You could use 12 mil if they're the only ones you've got, that would also work fine. But I've got pretty coloured ones, so that's why I want to use what I want to use. So we're just going to pick... Well, we're not going to pick. So this part here is always the front, which means these are the sides here. So then we're just going to pick probably the one closer to the front. And we're going to punch a hole. Now this is going to punch through the stitching I just did. Um, but again, we can just put some glue and I need to stand up and put my whole weight on it. <sighs> and that did not punch as well as I thought it was going to. I suspect that has something to do with the HTV. Um, but it has left a mark so that I can see where it needs to come out. So I can just take some scissors. Ah, oh, these ones will be fine. These... This will make them more blunt, but that's right. And I'm just going to cut the hole out. It is definitely the HTV that's avoiding this coming out. How unfortunate. So normally, it's this holographic specific HTV. It's not all HTV ever. And I have these fun little yellow popcorn coloured grommets. So again we're going to put the gasket on the back and it is going to be a mountain. I call it like that because I'm hoping that that will be easier to remember. And then we squish it down. And then we just need to do the same to the opposite. So this is the back side, one, two, three. Now technically the centre is between these two, so you could also put the grommet all the way down there if you so desired. Now again, I don't know if this is actually going to punch my hole properly, but we are going to try. I heard it do most of it, which again is a great start. It is the holographic HTV. It was pain to cut to be honest I had to use more pressure for holographic iron on and I did two cuts so I did the whole process twice uh, just to make sure it really cut through because the one time I did it as once it was really hard to weed so this stuff is just extra firm if you're going to use the holographic you may run into similar problems that I have not that they're really problems it just takes longer to do stuff that's pretty much all it is, which I don't mind because this is going to look amazing. So again, cut it out. doesn't matter if the hole looks a bit dodgy. See that? It doesn't look great. But then we put this on and suddenly all the problems are gone. So don't be worried if you don't have a hole punch and you have to manually do the, the holes with scissors or whatever. It will still look just as glorious. And then I have, this is my um, strap. It is just really thin chain that I have hooked on here and then I've made three passes. So one end connects to this side and then it's fed through the loop, back through the loop, and then this end is connected to here. So when you pull tight, they all line up. Um, you don't have to do that. You can buy pre-made chains. I think chains look prettier than a normal strap. But if it's not your jam, you can just cut 
a half inch strap. You would cut one inch, fold it in half, and then stitch it. So then when we pull all of this part up and open it out, this is what we get. And then you can just cinch it closed while still looking cute. And there you have it. One very adorable little bag to take out. I hope this was educational for you all, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!